Look at the ways you can immediately open your presentation with impact and engage your audience. Many professionals, and of course most of my work is in the business world, they are absolutely fine once they get going and talk about what they're experts in. Very few know how to open and conclude well. So we tell them to come out punching. Welcome to You Have Choices, Options of Openings, The Techniques. As you soon will come to discover, our subtitle is How to Open Your Presentation with Impact. At the beginning of a speech, presentation, seminar, client meeting, report to senior management, sales presentation, or any manner of presentation you deliver, you need to arouse interest in the subject. After all, we stand in the rain to see a movie. Would you stand in the rain to listen to your presentation? One of the past presidents of my local chapter, the National Speakers Association in Northern California, Gary Puris, used to be in the advertising business. And his job was to come up with the advertising campaigns to promote movies. In fact, can you believe when Spielberg finished Raiders of the Lost Ark, they had absolutely no idea who their market was. And he brought Don Garrett in to speak to our chapter. And he was the person who hired Gary for the different studios for the campaigns. And he told us of all the millions and millions of dollars it takes to create a movie, half of the costs is the promotion and the marketing and advertising. But he said it doesn't matter how many millions of dollars we invest, that doesn't make a movie a success. We spend all the money advertising and marketing so we have a good opening so we can get our money back in case the movie isn't a success. But he said, what makes a movie a success? And I believe it probably what helps build your career is five memorable moments. He said, it's the five moments when you walk out of a movie house and you say to your friends, oh, could you believe that opening? Did, did you know that was going to happen? When did the little boy know that he was dead? And then you go to work the next day and say, you have got to see this movie. I can't tell you, but you've got to see it. And you start retelling the scenes, how you felt. And don't you think when you talk about Peter Legg telling the story about surprising his daughter in London or saying goodbye to his father for the last time, or seeing Vince on that chair, aren't these the moments that you're gonna talk about? And I would challenge us all to look at our presentations and see where are the moments. And certainly the emotional connection when an audience says, wow, they're talking just to me, that'll be a moment. Very often with an opening, it'll make a difference. And there are so many techniques. Now, if you ask, if you start your presentation with a question, if you have ever heard yourself say something such as, have you ever lost a sale you deserve to make? Next time you deliver it, say, how often have you lost a sale you deserve to make? Because if they once lived through a situation, had a problem, had a challenge, they lived through it. However, if it is a situation they frequently have, they are more likely to pay attention to what follows. An interesting statistic or little known fact. Now, many speakers have amazing statistics and facts within their presentation. I'm gonna challenge you to perhaps pull it out and put it at the opening. For example, I was invited to speak to 450 Seventh-day Adventist pastors. And part of our being an audience advocate, we have to look at our presentation from the point of view, they don't know who we are, when they're reading the review and the title, what are they thinking? 
My subject was how to design and deliver a more charismatic sermon. And I realized that the most generous person would think, hmm, she's the only person on the program who isn't a minister. How can anyone who isn't a minister tell me how to write a better sermon? I write one every week. I bet she isn't a Seventh-day Adventist, which I'm not. If you can open with an interesting statistic from their industry or their world they don't know about, you might just get their attention. So I walked out and said, 465 times in the Bible, it said it came to pass. It did not say it came to stay. And unless your sermon is well constructed, artfully crafted, and charismatically delivered, it will not come to stay in the hearts, minds, and lives of your congregation. And if you have never heard 450 Seventh-day Adventist pastors saying, Amen, Hallelujah, to get you off to a good start, you have never lived. Now, we all know stories and examples are a great way to open our presentation, and next we will look at how to do it. Meanwhile, how about transporting to your audience to a different time and place? Vince did the most magnificent opening. I would match his opening to any opening with any presentation. Standing on a chair, you were there. He transported you to the past. If you want to transport your audience into the future, you can do that with the word imagine, as I recommended my friend at the Fairmont did. Imagine, take them to a different time and place. Now remember, this side of the stage, your right, their left is the past, and your left, their right is the future. Because if you move in the wrong direction, they might not know the principle, but they know there is something wrong. And then we can look to Hollywood. From 1999 to 2005, I attended about 15 screenwriting workshops, not because I have the patience or the talents to be a screenwriter, but you have to admit, Hollywood knows how to emotionally connect and tell great stories. And I was speaking to the National Speakers Association, Greater Los Angeles chapter in November of 2002, and I was saying that David Freeman, the screenwriting teacher, talks about the opening of a mover as the flavor scene. And perhaps we need to look at the opening of our presentation as how do we set the flavor? There was a man in the fourth row, put his hand up and said, you're quoting my competitor, why aren't you quoting me? To which I said, well, who the heck are you? He was Michael Haig, and he is a screenwriting teacher, and he is the story consultant for Will Smith's production company. The next time I spoke to the Los Angeles chapter, greater Los Angeles chapter, was exactly 10 years later, 2012 November, and Michael Haig delivered it with me, and it was, and the award goes to the best speaker when you incorporate Hollywood principles into your presentation. And one of his techniques, which I recommend you look at your presentation very simply, is get into the scene late. And so often we spend so much time setting up the situation, I challenge you to look at your stories, where is the scene, where is the action? You can always do the setup later, just grab them. The email said, do you need to know I was in my office, it was a Monday, I'd been there, I was on my sixth cup of coffee? No, no, no. The story's about the email. So I challenge you to look at your presentations that way. Because remember, as, as Alfred Hitchcock said, a movie is like life with all the dull parts cut out. 
And probably a lot of our setup is the dull parts. So just get to the action. Another way you might open your presentation is being A is like. My next door neighbor was the senior scientist at Genentech. He was working on developing an AIDS vaccine. And I said, Mike, I want you to come and speak to my women's professional group. Now understand, we don't spend any time with scientists. And even if we did, we wouldn't know what they were talking about. So I want to hear about your work developing the AIDS vaccine, but you have to tell us what is it like being a scientist. How about this for an opening? He said, being a scientist is like doing a jigsaw puzzle in a snowstorm at night when you don't have all the pieces and you don't have the picture you're trying to create. I defy you to come up with a, as good a phrase to explain what you do that is visual. And as Laurence Olivier said, the art is hiding the art. The audience might not know your principles or why you're doing it. They just know you have an impact.